Hello and welcome. This is six essentials that every new cat parent needs. I'm Charlotte and that's Pepper. I remember when I first got her, it was so overwhelming and I wish I had a guide to follow to make the transition of new cat parenthood a little easier. So we're gonna get into it, but first make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We are here to raise the standard of living with and caring for cats. New videos drop every week, so make sure you're part of the family. So you've decided to get a cat, but then suddenly you realize that there is a long list of things that you need. You've got to prepare, whether it's adjusting your home to meet the needs of this new little creature or going out to get a ton of supplies, it can be super overwhelming. Don't worry, as with any other big, exciting new change in life, getting organized can make the transition way more manageable. The more organized you are, the more calm you'll be. And during the early days of this transition, that makes a way sweeter environment for everybody. So let's talk about where to start. To be fully transparent, this video is just about the home and supplies preparation. For any preparation regarding the health of your pet or the health of any other pets in your household, consult your vet. Alternatively, if you're choosing to adopt from a local organization, Yay. they'll often have a ton of great resources for you and your cat's health. And they'll let you know what medical steps that you'll need to take in order to have a happy and healthy arrival. And depending on the type of cat you're getting, your vet or the local rescue organization can help give you insight as to what grooming tools that you might need. Next up, you'll want to make a list of the supplies that you'll need and what you already have. Maybe this isn't your first cat and you still have some items in storage. Or maybe your family member or neighbor is getting rid of some supplies and they can share. It's always great to assess what might be already available to you versus what you have to go out and get yourself. Let's talk budget. Speaking of using what you already have or what might be available to you from your network, this is a great way to keep the budget more manageable. Caring for a cat can add up quickly, especially especially in the initial period. Make an honest and realistic budget on what you're willing to spend for these initial items and try your best to stick to it. You'll also want to include the cost of litter and food just to make sure that there are no surprises. While looking at your list of things you need to get versus your budget, it might feel really overwhelming. We suggest thinking of this more as an exercise in prioritizing. Spending more on a litter box? Maybe opt for a more affordable cat bed or DIY cat toys. It's okay to find a balance of give and take that works for you. Your new kitty certainly doesn't want to stress you out financially, so work with what you've got. All of that being said, if you do have the ability to spend more during this initial upfront period, investing in durable, high quality products will likely save you in the long run. It's far too often that we see torn up scratching posts and beat up cat trees and sunken in cat beds on the side of the road during garbage day. While the cheapest option might feel like a no brainer when you're first getting started, you might need to replace this within the first one to two years. Making the conscious decision to invest in pieces that will last might sting at first, but you won't find yourself having to replace it. Buy once, cry once, right? All of that being said, get creative and don't be afraid to ask for help from your network. Maybe you have a friend who's super handy and does an impressive DIY. Maybe your local pet store offers discounts for rescues. It's worth asking around and most people will be happy to help and excited for your new family member. So let's get into six essentials that every new cat parent needs. Starting off, a functional and accessible litter box setup. Your basic setup should consist of essential one, litter box and cleaning tools, and essential two, litter. Over time, you can add a litter mat, but we wouldn't consider that essential right away. You've already got a lot going on. What makes a good litter box? Cats need to feel safe when they use their litter box, especially in a new environment. As a result, your litter box should be designed to offer safety and comfort as they do their business. Some important features to look out for in your litter box are visibility for cats. Cats prefer a box with a view. We understand that many people live in a space where having an open litter box might be unpleasant. At the end of the day, you brought this cat into your home and you need to be prioritizing its comfort. Some litter boxes have high sides and an open top. This this might be a good compromise because it covers the contents of the litter box a little bit more to the human eye. It helps keep mess inside and it's still open and airy for your cat's comfort. A cat's sense of smell is way stronger than ours. So imagine how unpleasant a dirty litter box is to them. No matter the litter box you choose, make sure that you clean it daily to keep you both comfortable. That's why the more accessible the tools are, the better for making better cleaning habits. Your litter box should provide easy access for daily cleaning and should be made of durable materials that can stand up to daily use. Choosing a litter box with enough space for your cat to move around will help keep litter in the box while you're cat digs and scratches. This makes for a more comfortable bathroom experience overall. Typically, experts recommend a litter box that is the size of your cat's body and tail. To prevent accidents and squabbling, we recommend one litter box per every cat plus one extra. So if you've got two cats, three is the magic number for litter boxes. There also needs to be at least one box on each floor of the home. So what makes a good litter? The type of litter you're using is probably the single most important factor for controlling tracking. Generally, low tracking types of litter include those that are made of paper, walnut, corn, and soybean or tofu. Also, look out for ones with low dust. This avoids those little paw prints all over your house. Litters to avoid if you're trying to reduce tracking around your house would be those made out of clay or silica. Small particles can be a lot easier to fling around the house, and they also get caught in the crevices between your cat's paws. A clumping litter will be the easiest to clean and one that will help prevent dust. Clumping also helps lock in odors for a longer period of time. Remember when we said that a cat's sense of smell is way stronger than ours? Well, that means that most of those artificial perfumes and fragrances that us humans are used to are likely too overpowering for your cat. 
A big issue with scented litter is that they're really just covering up unwanted odor instead of helping prevent it. So what your cat ends up experiencing is the stinky odor and the overly artificial scent at the same time not pleasant. Let's talk safety. Many conventional litters include some not so nice ingredients that can be harmful to your cat if ingested or can lead to respiratory issues over time. Make sure you're looking for a litter that contains natural ingredients that are safe to ingest, but there are safer options out there that won't be as serious or stressful if your cat decides to have a nibble. Bonus points, eco-friendly. If you have the opportunity to start your cat care off on a sustainable foot, that would be amazing. We don't even realize, but so much litter waste ends up in landfills. Look for a litter that's either made from recycled materials or byproducts, and also how they can be disposed of afterwards. Depending on your regulations, some specific litter, like tofu, can be composted or flushed down the toilet. Again, always make sure to check with your guidelines. You might also want to factor in the age of the cat that you're bringing home. Older cats have a hard time cleaning their paws, so they would benefit from a larger pellet shape that won't get stuck in between their beans. However, kittens might have a tendency to eat their litter if it's too appealing, so transitioning them to tofu litter as they get over might be a better idea. Check out the description for a complete guide to different types of litter, as well as a deep dive into tofu cat litter. One of our favorites. At the end of the day, it's really important to go with a litter that your cat is comfortable with and leaves them with a positive, peaceful experience. So you've got your litter box set up and planned and ready to go. Let's get into essential number three, a dedicated and durable scratching post. Cats need to scratch their claws against tough surfaces to remove old nail sheaths and dead skin. The stretch and flex, and to mark their territory. There's no fighting this instinct, which is why they'll start shredding your curtains and your couches if they don't have a proper scratching post. So what makes a good scratching post? The basic need of a good scratching post is essentially a delightfully rough surface for a satisfying scratch. Here are three factors to consider when choosing between them. Cats wanna stretch out entirely when using the post. Some cats may enjoy a horizontal scratcher on the floor, while others prefer a vertical scratch. This scratching post, for example, clocks in at three feet tall. Adventurous cats might even hop up and perch on top of it, making it an even more enjoyable piece for them. So let's talk material. Cecil is an excellent choice for most cat scratching surfaces. It's natural and strong and has an irresistible rough but pliable texture. You can also look for a carpet material. This offers a smoother look than Cecil, but that same long-lasting quality. Cats are used to the stability that trees provide in the wild. This is why a scratching post needs to be made from solid, material. It needs to stay firmly on the ground while in use. You could opt for a wall-mounted scratcher, which is another reliable alternative with a smaller footprint. If a post is wobbly or insecure, your cat's going to opt for more of a reliable scratching outlet like your leather sofa. Let's talk bed. Sleep is certainly at the top of most every cat's list of preferred activities. So guardians should cater to this interest and provide many different places for cats to sleep. This leads us to essential number four, a comfy and cozy bed. Like humans, cats have different preferences when it comes to bedding. Some like to curl up in a cozy bed, others like to sprawl out, and sleeping habits may also shift with the seasons as cats seek out warmer or cooler spots to rest. Here are some things to consider when choosing the right bed. Dedication. Cats need spaces that are just for them in order to feel secure. View. Many cats enjoy a little height to keep tabs on the world below, so putting a bed near a window is a great idea. They also might enjoy slumbering on a perch or cat tree. Privacy. On the other hand, some cats might prefer to snooze in private, and elderly cats may not be able to jump high. For those pets, we recommend an enclosed bed or cat tent. Shape. Most cats love to curl up whether it's on their sides or sitting up in a tight loaf. So a bed that supports this and provides them with nest-like comfort is key. They tend to love a concave surface that gently hugs them into place. Additional comfort, cats enjoy burrowing into a comfy blanket just like we do. Despite all that fur, cats prefer warmer temperatures than humans. So consider offering an additional blanket or even a heating pad during colder months. Materials, opt for a bed with a satisfying tactile material that feels nice for cats. Think faux fur, shearling, or felt. Good construction. It's far too often that cat beds totally deflate and lose their structure and shape after just weeks of having them. Opting for a bed made from quality materials materials like a sturdy foam cure will help ensure that the bed keeps its optimal shape for the long haul, which not only looks better, but will also be way more comfortable for your cat. Toys. Contrary to popular belief, cats are not meant to stay and lay and sleep all day. In the wild, cats spend up to 30 to 50% of their time chasing, pouncing, leaping, wrestling with prey. In the home, they express those instincts with play. That's why coming in at essential number five is cat toys. Without sufficient playtime and engagement, cats can become bored and stressed and even develop behavioral problems, such as destructive behavior and even house soiling. It's important for a guardian to play with their cat every day and provide them with both physical and mental stimulation to keep them healthy and fit. So what makes a good cat toy? You'll learn pretty quickly that cats can play with just about anything. They'll find
find a hair elastic and decide it's their latest obsession. Empty cardboard roll from toilet paper, an excellent target for swatting practice. Cats appreciate novelty. Having several toys that you can rotate in and out every few days will help keep your cat interested. Of course, you can go some DIY routes, but in general, you'll want to go with something that can withstand some heavy bites and scratches. And also, make sure it's stimulating enough to keep them interested. Some types of toys include puzzle toys, chaseable toys, battery powered or not, wands stuffed with catnip, and crinkly toys. Owners should take care to store any wands with strings while they're not in use. These can be a choking hazard or get tangled around your cat. And for safety, you might also want to avoid toys with small bells or other small objects that they could choke on. So what makes for a good playtime session? Frequency. Cats basically invented high intensity interval training. God bless you. Long before fitness influencers were even a thing. They thrive on 10 to 15 minute playtime sessions twice a day. Distance. It's all fun and games until your cat claws at your hand. In the heat of the moment, you can understand why your cat thinks your hand or your foot is the toy. It's moving, it's got wiggly appendages for biting, and it's often right in their face. The art of playtime includes understanding your cat's instincts and maintaining boundaries to keep you both happy. Protect yourself and put some space between you and your cat. Cats at play follow their hunting urges, which drive them to treat toys like prey. Your cat needs a chance to chase and stalk and pounce and kill each toy to feel truly satisfied. Cats are naturally energetic in the morning and the early evening, so those are optimal times to play. And just like people, cats prefer not to exercise on a full stomach. Playing fulfills their urge to hunt, which naturally results in the desire to feast afterwards. Support this natural instinct by offering a meal after playtime. So we've covered playtime. It only seems fitting that now we dive into essential number six, what they would naturally visit after their playtime session. Their dining bowls. What makes a good bowl? Some cats are choosy when it comes to design. They may avoid or refuse use a bowl that's too deep. This isn't just pickiness. Some people believe that cats get whisker fatigue, which is just when they brush their sensitive whiskers along the sides of the bowl. There's no conclusive evidence for this condition, but we still recommend a shallow dish to help your cat dine in comfort. Choose a bowl that suits your cat's lifestyle and appetite. Larger cats will eat more than smaller ones, and more active cats will need more food than those who prefer to lounge. Would you want to eat off the same unwashed plate every meal? Your cat prefers a clean dish too. So look for bowls made from odor resistant materials that are easy to wash, like ceramic. No delicate china here. We recommend choosing strong materials that can stand up to daily use, so you don't need to worry about cracks or damage. Cats can't use forks, so it's most comfortable for them to eat from a raised bowl. A little lift can help prevent neck strain, and it also leads to better digestion. Many experts recommend keeping food and water in different locations. Your cat might be more inclined to drink water if their food is not directly next to it. In the early days, keep an eye on your cat's dining and drinking preferences, and make adjustments as needed. Some cats are pickier than others when it comes to water, so over time, you might want to get a water fountain instead of a standard bowl to help them hydrate more. It's normal for a cat to avoid brand new items. They've got to become familiar. However, there are a few things that we can do to make products more appealing for our cats. So introducing them to new furniture. Cats are creatures of habit and they might require some time and encouragement to warm up to new pieces. With their sensitive noses, they're especially wary of items that don't smell familiar. That fresh out of the box scent that might accompany a lot of products, and famously, new cars, can be especially strange to cats, even if it's too subtle for a human nose to detect. After a few days, that smell will dissipate, leaving nothing but a desirable new product. If you want to guarantee a more positive Positive experience for your cat, we've got a few more tips to help your products make an irresistible first impression. Use a reassuring scent. Place an item that your cat sleeps with, like a toy or a blanket, on the new product. This gets their scent on it and makes it seem familiar and friendly. You can also use synthetic pheromones, like Fellow Eye Spray. Offer a treat. Bribery can work. Sprinkle a few treats on a new perch or place them on a new bed. A little catnip or a silver vine works on scratching posts too. Placing a favorite toy on a new perch or a new bed or scratching post can be very effective. This entices your cat to explore that new thing. While playing with his toy, he'll discover that the product underneath it is a nice place to hang out too. Positive reinforcement. Owners should shower their cat in praise and affection when they see them using the new product. This builds happy associations. Give your cat whatever they like and they'll perceive it as good. Location, location, location. Different products work better in different parts of the home. A well-placed product Product will integrate seamlessly to a cat's behavior. Cats like to be close to the action, not isolated away. So products should be integrated into the living space so they can be near you. Perches and cat towers should be placed near windows or other place where cats can really see what's going on. Beds should be placed near familiar sleeping spots. Scratching surfaces can be placed near anything the guardian doesn't want the cat to scratch. Cats instinctively scratch after waking and traveling familiar paths. So scratching surfaces near beds or doorways are also really good. Don't force it. Don't pick up the cat and put them on the new product. You might scare them. Scaring them could cause them to avoid the product. Be patient. Your cat will want to explore the new thing. We just have to wait for them to be ready. Introducing them to a new litter box. After litter box design, the next most important factor is litter box placement. Cats should have a clear view of the room while using the box. No blind corners, no looming shelves. Being able to look around will assure them that there are no predators sneaking up on them. You might be tempted to store your litter box in that random storage room that nobody goes into, but by default, if it's out of sight, it might be out of mind and you might not clean it as often as you'd like to. Place your litter box somewhere that is easily accessible, but still low traffic. No loud 
loud noises or things to distract them while they're doing their business. If cats are having accidents outside the litter box, make sure that their litter box placement is accessible for them. For instance, elderly cats might have accidents if their litter box is upstairs. Like we said, there should be one litter box per every floor of the house for easy access. If that issue persists or your cat seems to be in pain or discomfort, guardians should always contact their vet immediately. Urinating and defecating outside of the box can be a sign of major illness. You've got this. So those were some of the six essentials that every new cat parent needs. To recap, a litter box, good litter, scratching post, bed, toys, and dining bowls. Over time, you'll learn your cat's personality. And then you can see if you wanna get them perches, towers, maybe even a little leash. But these six things should get you both started. You'll be on the right foot and you'll be supporting their natural instincts. But we forgot to mention the most essential of all, treating your cat with love and compassion. Your cat can have all the goodies in the world, but if you're not making time to bond with them and develop that relationship, they won't lead as fulfilling of a life. We can't wait for you to welcome your new cat into your home and we hope that you both bring each other a ton of joy. Thank you so much for watching. We hope this was helpful. What are some other things that you did to prepare for a new cat? We'd love to hear in the comments. You can find all of the products shown in this video in our description. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with another cat person or somebody you know that is bringing a cat into their life very soon. We've got new cat videos and education to come. New videos drop every single week, so we will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.